Right, we're now going to be looking at the hydrolysis of condensation polymers. Um, and by condensation polymers, I'm referring to polyesters and polyamides. Um, and when we're talking about the hydrolysis of them, that means breaking down those polymers back into their monomers using water. OK, so as you'll see in the reaction conditions, they'll all be done under aqueous conditions. Uh, so water has to be present to help break up those um, amide bonds or those ester bonds. OK, um, so first I'm going to start off by looking at a polyester. And we're going to do the hydrolysis of that polyester. So I'm just going to draw out part of that polymer. OK, like so. Um, and we know this is a polyester because we have that ester bond present over here. OK, um, now when we do the hydrolysis of these, it can be done under acidic conditions or it can be done under alkaline conditions. Um, and it's very important that you know which one is being done because they actually give different products. Um, and that's what examiners are looking for, that you can see the difference between each type of hydrolysis. So let's firstly start off with the acidic hydrolysis. So to do that, you need to have hot um, aqueous acid. OK, it can be any acid. Now, when we do this, we are breaking the ester bond here. So we break it between uh, the carbonyl carbon and that oxygen there. Um, and we're essentially going to add water across that bond. So we're going to add OH uh, to this and we're going to add a hydrogen to this. OK, so if we do that, we form a carboxylic acid at this end and at the other end we form the alcohol and as you can see this is actually two repeat units drawn here um, this polyester is made from just one monomer uh, with a functional a different functional group at either end okay uh, so we've added water across that molecule um, and we form the carboxylic acid at this end and the alcohol at that end okay um right if we now go on to the other one which is alkaline hydrolysis so this is now going to be using hot aqueous alkali like that um so we're still going to be breaking that ester bond there like that um but now we're actually going to get different um slightly different products okay when we're doing the hydrolysis under alkaline conditions and we're breaking that bond there we're not going to form a carboxylic acid here we actually form the carboxylate salt or the carboxylate ion okay if we've got um so if we knew what alkali we were using here so obviously it would be any hydroxide um if we're using potassium hydroxide i would have put k plus over here if we're using sodium hydroxide i would just put na plus over here okay and at the other end, uh, the alcohol, nothing, there's nothing different with the alcohol. The alcohol will always form. OK, um, so in terms of the differences between the two, um, if you're doing the hydrolysis under alkaline conditions, you form the carboxylate. If you do it under acidic conditions, you form the carboxylic acid. But the alcohol um, is the same in either. OK, right. Let's now move on to a polyamide. So I'm just going to draw out part of this polyamide. Like that. OK, we know it's a polyamide because you've got the amide linkage here. And as you can see, there'd be an amide linkage at either end. Um, now, if we do this hydrolysis under, so again, for polyamides, you can do um, acid hydrolysis, you can do alkaline hydrolysis. Um, when you do the hydrolysis of these, it is this bond that breaks over here and obviously the one at either end as well. OK, so if we're doing this under hot um, aqueous acid conditions, um, remember you're adding water across it. So OH is going to add over here. So that's going to form a carboxylic acid at one end and at the other end, um, usually you'd think would form. So we're going to add that one um, hydrogen to form um, the amine here. Now, be careful. We're doing this under aqueous acid conditions. OK, you have a lone pair here on the nitrogen under acidic conditions. There's, lot, there's lots of protons flying around. There's lots of H pluses flying around. OK, so that means this nitrogen here will be protonated again. 
Okay, so we're actually going to form the ammonium ion at that end um, under acidic conditions, like so. Okay, um, so that's the monomer that is going to, well, that's the product that's going to form when we do the acid hydrolysis of this polyamide. If we now do the alkaline hydrolysis, so I picked the wrong colour pen. Um, if we now do the alkaline hydrolysis of this, Um, at one end, remember under alkaline conditions, we never form the carboxylic acid. We always form the carboxylate um, iron. Okay. And the other end, the nitrogen is not protonated. So the lone pair um, it does, not, does not donate its electrons because under alkaline conditions, you don't have H pluses flying around. Okay. So in terms of the hydrolysis of a polyamide, um, under alkaline conditions, you always form the carboxylate, um, and under acidic conditions, you always form the carboxylic acid. Under acid conditions, you always form the ammonium ion, and under alkaline conditions, you just form the amine, like so. Okay. Um, so this example was one was another one where the, you had one monomer with two functional groups on them. Let's have a look where a polyamide um, is made from two different monomers each with a different functional group so i'm just going to draw out one repeat unit of it like so okay um again we know that this is a polyamide uh because you've got that ester bond there and it's uh, not ester sorry we've got the amide bond there and as you can see at either end we're going to form an amide bond as well Okay, so let's have a look at the products where we do the acidic hydrolysis of this. So hot, aqueous acid. Right, um, as you can see over here, when we break this bond here, and obviously we're going to break this bond here, we're going to form this dicarboxylic acid. Okay, so this one, uh, one monomer is where you have the dicarboxylic acid. The other one is where you have this diamine um, monomer over here, okay? Um, now remember, amines under acidic conditions will always be protonated, so you're actually gonna form this diamine over here, okay? The nitrogen will be protonated because it's acidic conditions, okay? Just always double check the number of carbons. This part over here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, this part over here just has one, two, and one, two, and therefore the number of carbons are correct. Okay, let's now do the alkaline hydrolysis. So hot, aqueous alkaline. Okay, um, so rather than forming the dicarboxylic acid, you actually form the dicarboxylate iron. So it is deprotonated like that, both ends. Okay. And now the diamine is just going to be a diamine as opposed to the diammonium. Oh, done it again. So it's just going to be NH2 at either end, like so. Okay. So it's it's important to remember under aqueous acid conditions, everything is protonated. You have um, your hydrogens on your carboxylic acids, and you have extra hydrogens on your nitrogen on your amine. Sorry. Um, and under alkaline conditions, everything is deprotonated, okay? You don't have any extra protons lying around, um, and therefore everything is deprotonated, um, like your carboxylic acid and your ammonium as well, okay? Right, I thought we'd do um, an example of an exam question. Um, so just bear with me whilst I draw out this exam question, because I thought this is a good one to practice, because they do the hydrolysis of this uh, polyamide. And draw it over here.
Okay, so in the question, you are given this molecule. It is a polyamide. Uh, in particular, this is actually a polypeptide, which just means it's a protein uh, that's made from many amino acids linking together. Um, and the kind of bonds over here, they're the extending bonds. So this is basically one repeat unit. Um, so this part here would attach to this part here. They've just drawn one section of this um, polyamide. Um, and the question is asking us to do to draw the organic products when you do the hydrolysis of this with hot sodium hydroxide. OK, so if it's done with so a hot sodium hydroxide that means this is the alkaline hydrolysis okay um and bear in mind under alkaline hydrolysis um everything is uh, essentially deprotonated okay so let's have a look at this kind of structure we're going to look at what bonds and this is what you should do as well you're going to see what bonds are going to break over here by identifying what functional groups we have okay remember um you're only going to break amide bonds here OK, or if you had esters, you only break ester bonds. OK, so uh, let's just go through this and let's identify what bonds are going to break by seeing which functional groups we have. Over here, uh, we have a, an alcohol. OK, so alcohols, we don't hydrolyze those. OK, obviously over here, we're essentially breaking the bond here because that's the uh, one that where the amide is going to be. OK, if we go across here, we don't break this carbon nitrogen bond here. OK, we don't break this bond over here. We don't just bear in mind, we never really break carbon carbon bonds. OK, um, so at no point should you break a carbon carbon bond. It's only some carbon oxygen bonds and some carbon nitrogen bonds. OK, um, over here, hopefully you can see we've got an amide bond here. OK, we've got carbonyl right next to a nitrogen and therefore we are going to break that bond there. OK, moving on to this end, we're not going to break this bond here. This isn't part of the amide over here. Again, we're not part of an ester or an amide. Um, moving down here, we've just got a carbon chain, so we're not going to break that. And hopefully over here, you can see that we've got an amide um, present over here. So that means we're going to break this bond here, this carbon nitrogen bond. there. OK, um, Let's now see which products are going to form. I'm going to try and draw them out. So I'm going to try and draw firstly. I'm just going to use the red pen again. Um, I'm going to try and draw out actually I'll use green. This part over here. So hopefully you can see that this part here is one product that's going to form. OK, let's also discuss that when we break this part here, uh, we are going to produce ammonia. So we are going to produce NH3. But the question is asking for the organic product. OK. NH3, ammonia, is not an organic product because it is not carbon-based and therefore, um, even though it is one of the products, it's not one that the examiners are looking for. Okay, so they want to know what this is and what this is going to be uh, drawn out. Okay, so let's focus on this one over here. So when we break uh, the bond over here, we're going to form um, our carboxylic, it's sodium hydroxide, uh, our carboxylate iron here, it's sodium hydroxide, so I can put my Na plus in there. OK, so we form the carboxylate salt at that end. I'm then just going to start drawing in the rest of this and hopefully fit this in. OK, when we get to this end, again, you're going to form a carboxylate here. So Na plus like that. OK, moving down to this end. Um, you've got an amine here. It's under alkaline conditions, so it should just form NH2. You should still have your lone pair present there. OK, so that one is one product that is going to form in this process. Let's now have a look at the other product. I'm just going to use a black pen for this. So that is this part here. OK, like that. So I'm now going to draw that part out um, and see what we get. Remember, you're the alcohol stays the same. The alcohol is not a functional group that changes during this hydrolysis. So if I just start drawing everything else out. So at this end, OK, again, you're going to form your carboxylate iron like that. A plus. And at this end, you're going to form an amine, so NH2. OK, your lone pair should still be present in that. OK. Uh, so key thing for these questions, identify any amides or esters, OK, um, and therefore from there you can identify which bonds break. So you should be drawing in these squiggly lines like I have been, 
okay then you identify which one's going to be an organic product and which one's not going to be organic so for example uh, this part here is not something that's so not something that the examiners are looking for and then you look at what conditions you have if you've got acidic conditions um you should be forming ammonium ions you should be forming carboxylic acids um and if it's done under alkaline conditions you should be forming the carboxylate salt um and you should just be forming the amine like we have in this question here